you Crafty Chemist Designs. Today I have a great project for you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the project. This layout is so universal that you can use any papers with it. Okay, so really I am featuring a couple papers, but this is a big one. So find a paper pack that you've got some one that's really nice bold print here and then I've got this one that's sort of a more subtle print and then I'm using some more of the color schemes here I think I use what four different colors maybe five one I used I used the shortbread scarlet sapphire the pine and the toffee okay so let's get started let's start with the base paper and I am using the shortbread so let's see got it here so here's a shortbread. So use any any nice color base that you want. Okay, and now let's cut this this piece here. And I made this so that I could use one sheet of paper for both of these layouts. So um, this paper is actually five and three fourths five and three-fourths. You could do six if you wanted to, but I made that five and three-fourths. So, let's see. Do I have that? I'm pretty sure I had that piece left over here. Here we go. So I'll cut into this. I did use some of the paper for my card samples. Okay, so let's cut this five and three fourths. You could use this side too, but I kind of think this side is fun. So I'm gonna do five and three fourths. Okay. So is it, what confuse anybody if I put it on the right side? I'm gonna do it on the right side so I can have a, um, you know, a mirrored image. So I'm hoping that's not going to bother anybody. Oh, but you know what? It's not 12 inches. I should have cut that. So it's five and three fourths and I cut off a quarter of an inch. So you need to cut off a quarter of an inch. Have done that before I taped it down because you want a little bit to show around so what I'm going to do is put this so that about an eighth of an inch shows at the top an eighth of an inch shows at the bottom and an eighth of an inch shows on the, the right side okay so if you're doing this layout then you would just do it on the left hand side okay okay now let's do this scarlet piece so you can see i've got this big scarlet piece behind and that piece is nine inches square so nine inches square so i'm using scarlet i thought the scarlet looked really nice against the sapphire background that was here so nine inches for sapphire I mean, scarlet, nine inches for the scarlet. Like I said, it will look good um, against that sapphire. Okay. I'm doing a nine inch square. Okay. 
And this one, you can see I, I started it about one and a half inches down from the top and one and a half inches from the side, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go one and a half inches from the, the side and then one and a half inches down and that's kind of where I'm going to place this. Again, I'm just using my eyeball and my Versamat. Okay, and now let's do this plaid paper. This plaid paper is eight and three fourths. Eight and three fourths by eight and three fourths. Okay. Um, I would use a paper that is um, more subtle because I used a pretty busy paper here. So I'm going to use a more subtle paper here. Okay. Like. For instance, if I had used this paper, like that, that would, well, for me, these two by each other would be too much. Okay, so that's why I'm using a little bit more subtle paper. Okay, so let's do eight and three fourths. That's what I said, right? Eight and three fourths. Next, and if you can see, I'm going to do this um, pine, okay? Um, and this pine is seven and a half by two and a half. Okay, so I have a piece. I did bring a scrap of pine so I didn't have to cut into the whole, the whole piece. So I said two and a half. By seven and a half. here um, I'm actually going to put it on this side because um, to mirror image it so on this layout it's flush up against the right side of this square and it's about um, one inch up okay so one inch up from the bottom flush with the plaid paper okay so let's put this down Again, if you put your if you put your big busy piece on the left side of your page, this green piece goes on the right side of the plaid. If you're doing this one where you put the the busy piece on the right side, then the pine is going to go up against the left side of this plaid piece. I hope I'm not confusing anybody, but obviously I want to use this in my scrapbook, so I'm just trying to make it so that I can use it. Okay, I'm gonna put that there. Okay, next I'm going to do this um, toffee piece here. And I did bring some toffee.
Okay, now this toffee piece, and you can tell it goes, it does go all the way to the end. But if you're going to put a, you see how I put the sticker here? You don't really see how far it goes, but it does go all the way to the end. So I'm going to say this piece is, um, let's make it seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and one and a half. So one and a half by seven and a quarter. Okay, and then I'm just dovetailing the bottom. I did not make it too deep. Okay, so what I do is I usually cut down the center so that I can center the dovetail and then I cut from the corner to that center cut and then from this corner to the center cut. And it usually gives you a pretty, pretty centered um, dovetail. Okay, this is the dark side here. Okay, so on this on this layout, you're going to put the flat edge, because I only dovetailed one side, put the flat edge up against the edge of your um, paper here. And it's about, let's, let's measure here, it's about a half inch of, from the bottom of the green, okay? So put it here about half inch up. Okay, so since I'm mirroring this page, I'm going to put it up against this right side here of the pine and about half an inch up. Let's measure about half inch. It's gonna go about here. Trying to do it straight. Okay. Okay, so on this one, you put the flat end over here and the dovetail here. On the mirrored side, you put the flat end here and the dovetail there. Okay. Um, now I'm going to do this sapphire, the sapphire paper. And I did put a five by seven. If you want, you can do, you know, two four by sixes or whatever, but I did choose to do this as a five by seven. Um, so if you're if you're not doing a five by seven, then you're obviously cut your mats a different size. But this is seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. So seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. Um, okay, so this is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Okay, um, and I am going to tape this down, but since I'm going to be sticking this one, a piece like this behind it, and then this um, doily behind, I'm not going to do it right up against the edge. I'm going to leave some room for me to 
be able to stick stuff down. And so this one is about an inch and a quarter from the top of the plaid. Okay, so I'm going one and a half inches down. I said one and a half, right? Oh, no, one and a quarter. One and a, I thought that looked a little bit too much. One and a quarter down, and then I'm just centering it on the page. So this seems about right. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. So this does extend a little bit to the right of, I'm gonna make this look even. This um, does extend a little bit to the right. Oh, that's not quite centered. Let me see, this looks a little better. Okay, so it goes a little bit to the right of where your paper is, your, these, the pine and the toffee, and then it doesn't quite cover up the dovetail. So when you're centering this, you want to you know, try and not cover up that, that dovetail. Okay, um, I did throw in this doily. Um, if I could find it. What did I do with the embellishments? Oh, here they are. I think I put it in here. Um, I did throw this in. This is from the Hope and Kindness doily. You know, there was that big, the big doily and then the small doily. Um, that's where this is from. Um, because this, this layout actually is um, kind of copying, let's see, which layout was this copying? One of these layouts. Did I copy one of these layouts? Maybe not. Well, I got this layout from someplace, people, um, and I, um, I wanted something here and I didn't have anything big to put there, but I wanted it to be subtle. So um, I thought this doily would be good. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to cut some of this, uh, cause I'm gonna stick it under. All right, I left some room. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit. So let's, I'm gonna put that there. Um, Let's tape it down. And then you do have this other, you can use the other half, right? If you cut it down the middle, you could use half for that and half for this side. Okay, and I'm just going to tuck it underneath here. About here, about right here. I do have the placeholder. So let's put this down. If you have your picture, just put your picture right on there. But I want to get this down so that I know where to place my other pieces. Okay, now let's find a um, some embellishment there. This is one of the things I am going to miss a lot from Stampin' Up! are these embellishments. Um, so we'll see, see what they have similar. I'm going to use, I'm going to use that one because it looks the same. And so this one actually is not tucked down underneath it because it's, it's pretty small. This is about one inch or so in from the edge is where I put this. And on here you could put the date or the location or you know whatever that you're doing. Um, okay, uh, now let's do these. These um, sort of flags. 
are, let's see, um, they're each about one inch. I made them about the same width, one inch. And then the longest one is two and a half. So this is two and a half. This one is about two and a quarter. And then this one is two inches. Okay. So I'm just going to, you know, use some of my scrap here. So what did I say? It was one inch wide. And then the red one was two inches tall. Okay, let's see, the pine one is two and a quarter. So let me make sure this is two and a quarter. Yeah, it's at least two and a quarter. So one inch wide and two and a quarter long. That's the pine. And then the toffee, that's toffee. Let me see if I have a pizza tea. Yeah, here we go. So one inch wide and two and a half. Okay, so these are all three of these are one inches wide, two and a half two and a quarter and two inches. It's kind of what I did. Now let's dovetail them. Again, I'm gonna go up the center and cut to each side. This is one thing I don't do a lot of is make flags like this, so. I decided to do it on this layout because I felt like it needed just a little bit of something, something up in here. Okay, so let's tape this one down. And I would, so this is about, you can see, it's about four inches from the side. So I'm gonna put this at about eight inches here and I did do it from the top of the pattern paper not the top of the page so if you can see you see how I, I put it at the top of the pattern not at the top of the page okay so do that one and then let's do the pine and I'm gonna put it like right around here. Well, that seems a little bit crooked. And then the Scarlet. Again, I love those colors. They're so classic. And then I'm kind of going back this way. So they're all kind of overlapping, but um, you know, I kind of alternated. I made the toffee, the pine, and then the, the scarlet. Okay, and then we're gonna go back and put some other embellishment there. Okay, um, here I have the passport. And let me get the sticker sheet out. You know, I have this passport that I was gonna put on a different one and then it, I didn't end up using it. And so it's kind of just sticking on here. So I do think I'm gonna use this one. I might have to add some adhesive. Normally I might put a different sticker so it's not exactly the same, but this one's about to fall off, so I figure I might as well use it. So I'm gonna put it about, I don't know, something like here. So just find some kind of, I call these sort of sprinkle stickers, like these hearts and all of this that you just sprinkle around the page. Find some kind of sprinkle sticker from your paper pack or sticker sheet that um, would work. 
Okay. Um, and then let's do this. So this one was travel with me. It came from here. So I think I'm going to try and make this one work. Collect memories. So it's travel with me, collect memories. Okay, I am going to pop this up for a couple reasons. One, I like to use foam tape and pop things up when I don't have my picture on it yet, but I want to put my sticker to overlap it a little bit, but I can't, I can't put adhesive here because I don't have the sticker down yet. But if you pop it up, then you can put, you can just leave the backing on your, on the foam tape and leave it on top of your um, your picture with no problem and look at me look how good I did I'm trying to conserve on my foam tape so I'm only putting two pieces down okay so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to take the tape the backing off the bottom one and leave the backing on this one because that's going to go over um, over that so I think maybe like right around here on this one I made it flush with the toffee to show a little bit of the green so I can do that like right around maybe right here but I don't know if that's covering too much maybe I'll I'm gonna stick it down like that a little bit lower because it's a bigger sticker so I put it a little bit lower And then the same thing with this sticker here, you see how I don't, I'm, it's popped up so that I could put it, overlap it with my picture, but since I don't have the picture there, um, the foam tape with the backing covers it fine and I can still remove this. See, I can still remove this, no problem. So, that's why I like to pop these up. So let's find one of those to do. Um, so I was thinking this one, what do you guys think? Should I do this one? I could do the circle, but I was thinking this. Let's see how this looks. That's fine, I think that looks pretty good. The other option is the circle. The only thing when you do this, I'm going to overlap it, you know, this is going up and down. So. I want to make sure that I put my foam tape so that I can leave the backing on. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Like normally, if I just was gonna pop this up, I might put foam tape like here, here, and here, going diagonally with the, um, the, tri the diamond, but then I wouldn't be able to really take off any of the, the foam tape or leave any of the foam tape on. So I'm going to put this here so I can leave this foam tape on and then put this one going up and down. I might put a little bit here because I don't like the ends to be sinking down. Might leave those on. We'll see where they hit. But I don't want the ends to sag. So I'm definitely leaving the back on this one. And I think I'm gonna leave the back on those two. I'm only going to take this one off. So I'll put it something like that. Again, I don't wanna to cover too much of my picture, so. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna put some of these um, embellishments down. Let's see, let's find some here. Um, oh, I do have another plane. I could put another plane. Should I put another plane here? I could put a star, enjoy the journey. Let's see, I put another plane there. And then there are some, I'm gonna think I might put this, this arrow.
like it like this, like it's saying collect memories and I'm putting it to the memories, although I like it kind of off the page, off that too. Okay, let's do the airplane. I do like this black. It really contrasts nicely with these. And again, these are so thin, but they add dimension to your page. So I'm gonna put that there. And then I'm gonna put this one on. These, I feel regular adhesive works great. You don't need to have um, like liquid glass. Like I like to use liquid glass for um, my acrylic shapes, but with these, I'm okay with using um, just regular adhesive. Okay guys, I think that that is the whole page. Thank you for watching this video. I have a Facebook business page, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time to do demos. I have a Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents. You can share your artwork, ask questions. And I have an Instagram and TikTok, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I post um, artwork every day. And I have a blog, periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com.